Kind of wells. Yeah, we're we're going now. You're good. Is Leah back in the room? Oh, that's a great question. I don't see her. Not yet. Just let me know yeah. when you want to start. Just let me know. <laughs> All right, she's in. Okay. Leah, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Hi, from New York. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. To, uh, welcome to the special selectmen's meeting. It's Tuesday, March 31st, 2020. Uh, this is uh, an off night for us as we said we would be meeting weekly to try to get as much information out to the general public as we possibly could. Go, go. Uh, to, to start with uh, this evening, I just want to know that uh, we hear you, we understand your concerns uh, for, for everyone. But I'd like to thank uh, our town council, uh, Leah Rachin, our town manager, department heads who are still working, and all the other fellow board members. There's a, a tremendous amount of time and effort that's uh, going into trying to stay ahead of the information flow that we're getting or the lack thereof. And I just want to let everyone know how much uh, appreciation there is for the work that's being done that people don't see behind the scenes. So thank you all for that. Our first order of business then is municipal officers business and our public hearings. Carl, can I just uh, sure the, the people are saying they're not on some Facebook here. Hold on. Oh my gosh. They're on. They're on now. All right. Sorry. All set? Yeah. So our first order of business is the, the town COVID nineteen uh, update. So John, we'll turn it over to you to start. Uh, as chairman, members of the board and, and the public that are, that's watching, uh, we've had uh, since one week, uh, we've closed our beaches, we've uh, worked hard to uh, keep abreast of our neighbors and work together to write letters to uh, Governor uh, Mills. We have um, worked with our town attorney and looked at uh, what um, the state uh, municipalities are doing from Bar Harbor to uh, the Metro West uh, and and so we have um, continued to monitor this situation we feel strongly that um, with the um, cases of, uh, of virus progressing in York County uh, we need to do something um, more than what uh, was happening. And so we've asked our town attorney to prepare two um, ordinances, two uh, orders uh, for discussion tonight. Uh, one is stay at home and the other one is a temporary uh, limiting rental and or occupancy of temporary and seasonal occupations during the pandemic. So with your permission, I'd like to turn it over to our town attorney, Leah, Leah Rachin, who will go through each one and for uh, the board's discussion. Thank you, John. Uh, members of the board and members of the public, I just want to uh, pick up on what John was saying and give a, an overview of each of these orders. Um, the first, let me just start with the one that seeks to impose temporary uh, regulations and restrictions on seasonal accommodations, uh, not seasonal, but seasonal accommodations. And just to put this in context, I mean, obviously we all know that we're dealing with a major health crisis here, but just with respect to wells, I um, was provided with some very interesting uh, data, which I think is important to provide some context. Um, there are apparently at least 5,000 and perhaps more seasonal units in the town. Um, while the normal year round population is 10,000 up in the busy season, uh, estimates are up to about 40,000. And it's my understanding that there's been a notable influx of folks in this past week one of the other really compelling pieces of data is that York Hospital, the nearest hospital to the town of Wells, has only six ICU beds uh, available. And so, as you can imagine, this is this is uh, you know insufficient to keep up with 
the growing number of cases, um, especially as you all know, I'm sure, that the cases in York County and in Cumberland County are um, the highest in the state. And obviously, York County is the gateway to the rest of the state of Maine. Um, one of the major concerns that's been expressed is the density that a lot of the seasonable, uh, seasonal accommodations are built at. And also important to note is that they often are largely populated by the most vulnerable populations, elderly folks who are coming in. And so in this context, there has um, been discussed that there's a need to take temporary, and I emphasize temporary steps, to uh, protect health, safety, and welfare. And so that is the context in which this, uh, the order temporarily limiting rental and or occupancy or temporary seasonal accommodations during the uh, pandemic, that is what the context is. And so very uh, quickly in sum, what this order would seek to do would to be to prohibit short-term rentals uh, until May 1st, also to prohibit what we call high density accommodations, which basically are all of those things that are considered to be lodging facilities under the town's uh, definitions, also to be prohibited in, through May 1st. I should say May 1st or uh, when the governor determines that the state of emergency is over, whichever occurs first, and also to um, strongly recommend that any Buddy who is the owner or their guests of a second or seasonal property located in Maine stays at their permanent residence or wherever they are now. Um, and if they do come, that they must quarantine. Now, this second, I should say, the second and seasonal property, that recommendation is entirely consistent with the governor's most recent order. I think we're all digesting the most recent order. It just came out. Uh, she had a press conference at 4 30. And so um, what I will say is that this seasonal, uh, seasonal, the restrictions on seasonal properties, in my view, is consistent with the governor's order, both with the spirit um, and also the express wording, because there is a provision in her order. I think it's one of the very last paragraphs that talks about preemption. It says that her order actually preempts any uh, local regulation that is not as restrictive. So I read that to allow actually more restrictive uh, regulations by municipalities. And so with that said, that's the summary of the um, limitations on the seasonal accommodations. Let me go briefly into the stay at home order. Again, that was drafted prior to the governor's issuance of the stay at home order. Um, I think it would be okay and even advisable to consider enacting this one as well because it goes a little bit further in the sense that it addresses other areas where the governor did not address such as visits to senior um, care facilities and so that is something that you may want to consider I, I should go back to the prior order with respect to seasonal uh, accommodations i forgot to mention that it does actually outline some fairly important exceptions. For example, if somebody is here in town to care for a resident who is another, is either ill or infirm or to care for themselves, that is an exception. Also exceptions for those people who are engaged in essential businesses and services. So um, without you know, that, that's my summary of the, the various orders. If I can answer any questions from the board, I'd be happy to do so. Questions or comments from the board? No, I, I think it's pretty helpful. <laughs> I guess I'd make a comment. I think in looking at everything that we've had to study over the week when this has been being discussed since our last meeting, I think a lot has changed also and, and it's, it is definitely getting worse across the country and including your county. We had a death last night. We've had some things go on. Um, in looking at our grocery stores and our, our hospitals, as Leah said, there's only so many ICU units and there's only so much space. 
And if you go to the grocery store, some days it's, it's completely full and some days you can't find what you need. And if we add the thousand or 1500, whatever the number is, uh, right now, it, it'll be worse. And, uh, it's not in any way in my mind, I am not saying to anyone that we don't like you, that, that, this is residents versus taxpayers or summer visitors or anything like that. What this is, is what the, what the country needs right now. And that's, that's to try to stop this and save our summer. Not, we want to save the summer for our businesses. We want our, our businesses to be successful this summer. And my belief is if, if we don't do this right now, we, we might not be able to do that. And, and I think, you know, the whole flattening the curve idea is, is, is something that this, this will help. And, and I just, I plead with people to stop with the stuff on, on social media, stop with the stuff of accusing people and following people and saying, why are you here? That's not what we need. That's not the way to do things. But at the same token to the people that are trying to come to use this as a safe haven, please don't do that because we don't have the space in our hospitals or the food and stuff supplies to do this. And, and I, I mean, understand this, and I've said this numerous times to other people, I'm not sure how you're traveling because it's illegal right now to travel. So I, I, I'm not sure how you're getting here and all that stuff because the, the, the it's staying place is an, is an order and it's in your states. And uh, the governor said it today in her address that basically if you live in Florida, don't please don't come up to Maine right now. We, we don't, we can't have you. She said it directly to the Florida residents and, and basically anyone else, but she specifically said the word Florida. And I know a lot of people are, are, are doing that. We're not putting this in place forever. We're doing it for a time and we're going to have to relook at it, I'm sure. But we just want to stop this, the spread of this virus now. And, and I'm pleading with you. I, I get it. I, I know it's an emotional time. It's tough on all of us. But please, please be, be civil with each other. Take care of each other and understand we, we love our summer residents. We love our, 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 our six month residents, everyone. But we just can't handle it right now. That, that's my appeal. That's what I have to say. Tim, you said it perfect. You know, and <clears throat> the important thing to remember is the folks that want to come up here, they enjoy the community. They enjoy the towns, people, the year-round residents. They want to be here. They're our friends. A lot of, you know, a lot of them know us. We look forward to seeing them every summer. So this, this um, you know, sort of the hostility that's taking place on social media, we really need to uh, stop that. It's not helpful. All this is is a math problem, and that's how we need to look at it. We just don't have enough resources to support anyone else regardless of where they're from and and be able to take the responsibility that's required of inviting people in it's it's a liability at this point because we just we know we don't have it so it's that's all that's all this is right and i think we um and i agree with you i think you both have said it really perfectly um we don't want to offend anyone we're not um pointing out any particular businesses we know that everybody in this town contributes to this community and we appreciate everything and every effort everyone's making. I, I think part of the fear that I have is if we did have the influx of people and everyone got sick, we would not, for their sake, they shouldn't be here because we wouldn't be able to take care of them. So stay where you are, stay where you live. That those, those places are meant to take care of you and your place where you are at home, just like we're taking care of the people that live here. Yeah, I think we need to be as aggressive as possible now, so that way we can we can have a summer. Um, it, it's really important because I don't want to see us lose a summer. I still work two summer jobs. I work at Cognans and I work at Finest Kind down in Gunquit, and I still want to be able to go to my summer jobs as well as my full time job. And I think if the more aggressive we are right up front, uh, then the greater the likelihood that we have a full summer at this time. You know, we we still have hope that we can have you know our full summer there. But if we're not aggressive right now and people are disobeying these orders or or any of that, then then we're going to just we're going to lose the summer. And that's going to be terrible for everyone. And this these orders are all about the safety of all of the Wells people. That's the year round residents. That's our summer residents. That's the tourists that are just up here for a day. We're trying to save this town so that you can still enjoy this town come summertime and, and for years to come. Yeah, I, I don't need to continue on with what everyone is saying. It is a density issue. We, we have 10,000 people and we certainly cannot support 40,000 people at all. And we certainly, everyone, as we have spoken, 
you are vital to our community, to the businesses, to longevity here. It's going to pass at some point in time, and we're hopeful that people understand the decision making that has gone on behind the scenes uh, in trying to keep up with the information flow uh, that continuously comes at us. And just when you think you've heard it all, you, we come up with there's something else that we get hit with. So I want to show appreciation to the board and everyone involved in the town here as to when we make these decisions, it's in the best interest of the town of Wells. And the town of Wells means everyone, our year-round residents, and all the people that are a vital part of our community that we certainly appreciate and hopefully understand that, um, you know, this is going to end and when it ends, we don't like the negativity that's out there. Uh, to his, some people are, are pressing forward uh, with. It, it's unnecessary. It's not needed. There's reasons for people to be here. And, and I would hope that if there is a situation where you do have to come or because it's uh, some of this is volunteer for second homes and whatnot, please uh, consider bringing your own supplies and not going to the grocery store as soon as you get into town because we're hard pressed to continue the supply chain already. And also, if you can bring your own supplies to get through, a 14-day quarantine is absolutely necessary because we're going to have an influx of people. We can't control everybody. We can't fix every situation. We can't plug all these holes. So at a minimum, bring your own supplies and please, please quarantine yourself for 14 days as it's recommended. And together, we can all get through this. Can um, Leah or John or Carl or anyone on the board I think there's some um, confusion of what we've actually decided. I, I remember saying this to Leah the other day, that all, all these warehouses and all that stuff gets confusing to me personally, you know, whereas we're doing this. I think there's people from what I'm seeing right now on this chat and everything, they have no idea what we actually have decided, you know what I mean? Or, or we're about to decide on or whatever. Um, Cause now people think, with what Carl said, can we open with what, no offense, Carl, but what you just said, they think now they can open the seasonal cottages and do this stuff. Hmm. Um, uh, no, so we, we need to clarify gonna... what are we closing lodging. Are we, so we need to make sure we state this because I don't think they know. We need to have a motion after everyone is done having a discussion for the update. We have a legal you know, I think in order to... we can and can't do. Right. And then we can discuss what's in it. Oh, all right. I see what you're saying. All yeah. Right. So, let, so why don't we? Can we do it one at a time so we can discuss sure. one thing and then the other? And do yep. you want to do the seasonal accommodations first. I make a motion that we accept and approve the order temporarily limiting rental and our occupancy of temporary and seasonal accommodations during COVID-19 pandemic. Second. What was the dates on that, Kathy? The the dates um, is from today, oops, wait a minute, do the back page. It's from um, the approval of the order. And May, May the, the 30, what? From the 31st day of March until the, until we, we um, vote to take until it Until May 1. Until May, for, oh, that's right. This order until May 1st, 2020, or when the governor terminates the current state of emergency, whichever occurs first. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a second on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for further discussion for, for folks that are planning on coming back, this is what's in place right now. To be clear, we may have to extend this date information comes in I think we should be fair to people and let them know this isn't a locked in stone this is what we can do for right now and it's subject certainly to change and we're going to try to give as much notice as possible because that's why we're meeting weekly so so mr. chairman maybe maybe for clarity we could have uh, Leah go step by step what what it is that we're what we've done or you want to vote on it first? Thank well, you. I, I, I no, would, I don't want to vote before I No, no, we want to discuss it. That's why, why we made the motion a second so we can have a discussion. Yeah. A definition of seasonal, I think, would be helpful for the folks watching. Short-term rentals, lodging facilities, we have to define all that because that's the questions that are coming up. Yeah. I'm happy to take that on if you'd like me to. Yeah. Please. Please. Okay. So I'm just, I am looking at this order in front of me, and of course it will be posted on, on the town website and 
you know, in a timely fashion. But there are lots of whereas provisions, which basically between John and myself, uh, we, we basically uh, went through and that sets the scene as to why, why we're in, um, adopting these temporary regulations. But forgive me if I'm droning on a bit and reading, but I want to make sure everybody out there understands specifically what is contemplated here. The first um, category are it's short term rentals and I'm just going to read it except as otherwise provided, the short-term rental defined as a period of 30 days or less of, a pri of private residential properties in the town is hereby prohibited. Uh, no short-term rental agreements of any kind, whether or not consideration is exchanged, meaning whether or not it's paid for, shall be made by and between owners of residential property and any third parties. This prohibition will be in place um, with respect to dates of occupancy between the date of this order, which is today, if it, if it passes, of course, and May 1st, or as Kathy said, whenever the governor terminates the current state of emergency, whichever comes first, okay? And there is a specific exception to that, that any arrangements that, um, I should say that all of the rental arrangements that may have been made prior to this order are um, you know, affected by this order, except to the extent that occupancy has already commenced prior to today. So I just want to make clear if anybody's concerned that if anybody is already here in and, and occupying, it, this is not um, intended to kick you out. Um, this is a, a prospective forward looking prohibition. Okay. The second area contemplated are what we're calling high density accommodations. And I'm just going to read again straight from the wording of the order except as otherwise provided, no, and I'm using finger quotes here because this is a defined term in the ordinance, no lodging facility, which under the town code, the land use code chapter 145 includes hotels, motels, bed and breakfasts, small inns, seasonal cottage complexes, housekeeping cottage complexes, tent and RV parks, campgrounds and recreational parks. Okay, so that is what is contemplated by these high density accommodations. And similar to the short term rentals, basically they shall um, not be occupied from the date of this order until May 1st or whenever the governor declares the state of emergency over whichever first occurs. So with respect to th those two kinds of properties, meaning short term rentals and high density accommodations or lodging facilities, that is a prohibition from the date of this order today, if it goes through until May 1st. The third category of properties are what we're calling second or seasonal properties. And these are basically everything else. It's the, it's the um, catch all provision that if it doesn't fall within those other two, but just um, as far as intent goes, these are basically people's second homes. Um, I think one of the select board members mentioned the folks coming in from Florida, the, the snowbirds essentially who live part time in the town of Bluff. Um, and here the language is very consistent with what the governor herself um, issued in her executive order just a few hours ago. Basically, and here's the wording, the town is recommend, the town, excuse me, is recommending on the strongest possible terms that owners of second seasonal property and their invitees remain in the location of their permanent residence and or the dwelling they currently occupy from the date of this order until May 1st or when the state of emergency is declared over. Um, and also the second provision under that kind of property is as Carl had mentioned that they must self quarantine for at least 14 days from the date of arrival in town. And so those are the three categories. The exceptions are those that I already mentioned and um, it goes on to have some penalty provisions. And so uh, does that suffice, Mr. Chairman, as far as an overview of what's being contemplated here? As long as anybody on the board doesn't have any questions, is that clear? Needs Leah, can, information. Can just, Leah, can you clarify a couple of things? So um, if, if the lodging unit is currently housing uh, employees, essential employees, or like a project in Sanford or CMP employees. Yes. That's still fine. I believe so. And that is uh, actually specifically contemplated in the exceptions that if the workers are engaged in essential business and operations, 
as defined by the governor in her prior executive order, then those are specific exceptions and those people will absolutely be uh, uh, able to remain. And if uh, uh, um, one of the lodging units was a designated like evacuation center where it has generators and stuff like that, if there was a natural, we're not, we're of course keeping them. Yes, and in fact, a, another uh, specific express exception are government facilities and services needed to ensure the continuing operation of government to provide for the health, safety, and welfare. So those are pretty broad exceptions that, you know, um, that I believe we have to be practical here. We can't contemplate every, um, every situation, but I think their exceptions are broad enough to allow for essential services, but um, to be clear that those exceptions really are intended only for those kinds of situations. And in the event, here's another specific exception for individuals who are providing care for town residents who aren't able to care for themselves as a result of illness or infirmity. Yeah, what would be the definition of short-term rentals? Um, it is defined as a period of 30 days or less of a private residential property. Thank you. And that is, again, with or without consideration. So the word rental, I think, is a bit of a misnomer because if somebody says, well, I'm just giving it to a friend and I'm not charging them anything, this is defined broadly to um, um, contemplate those kinds of arrangements as well, if, even if no money is passed hands. And I think we're getting a lot of questions whether seasonal property owners that live in other states can open up their um, homes. Uh, like we said, if, if, if this passes, it's, it's a strong recommendation, the strongest yeah. recommendation we can give. It's an un it's not, we're not enforcing it because it's a recommendation, not in order if it passes. And if I could add to that, if I might, um, I'm looking, I'm just looking at the executive order that was passed, you know, today, and it goes into effect uh, this evening, midnight, uh, that in addition to what we're saying in the town of Wells, there is a travel, I'm looking here, I'm trying to find the, there's a travel ban, basically, that says no one shall be traveling except for those essential services. So arguably, if we read what is being contemplated by the town, the town's order, together with the governor's executive order, um, that is problematic for those folks who are wanting to come up because arguably, as Tim mentioned, in their home states, as well as now in the state of Maine, there are these uh, travel bans, except for essential travel. And there's a recommendation too that they would self-quarantine if they did show up here. Uh, in ours, it's a recommendation. If I right. heard the governor correctly, it's not- I think a it's, it's not a recommendation. It was, right. an order. it was a mandate, yes. Right. Um, I, I just like to stress, because I, I see a lot of people saying, well, what if I want to come up, you know, your state is under the same, it, chances are your state is under the same kind of stay at home rules we have. You're not supposed to be traveling. So how are you getting here? I'm not understanding that. So you, you should, we're saying if you're here now, you're fine. But if you're planning on trying to come up it, it, within this month, you're not because we're not allowed to travel either. We, we're only allowed to go to the store and, and, the, and the wherever, um, essential yes, travel. So we're under travel restrictions and so we are, you know, even if your state isn't, so we are, so you, you, you can't get here. I think the, the gist of it for people, you know, there, there's so many exceptions and so many possibilities. The, the rule of thumb here is folks, as I said a week ago, you know what's right and you know what's wrong. You're either going to administer the, the, washing of your hands, uh, sneezing into your elbow, taking care of yourself and your family, staying put, staying social distance from everyone. If you have a question that am I allowed to come or not, chances are you're not. And that's, uh, that should be the rule of thumb. We're, we're trying desperately to keep the density and the population down so that we can get ahead of this curve and ahead of this virus so that we can save the summer. If you choose to come up and you shouldn't come up, anybody here with a stick beating on you and sending you home we don't have the police force and we don't have the, the ability to monitor every single situation so 
if you choose to do things right, thank you. We appreciate it. That's what we're looking for. That's what we want you to do. We're trying to save the summer. We're trying to get out ahead of this. If you have a question, chances are you shouldn't come for all the reasons that you've heard. Well, and let's remember why, why state, federal, and local governments are having to crack down is, that, is because when these advisories were set in place early on, people ignored them or had the attitude that it doesn't apply to me or this is a special circumstance. We all have things that we want to do that we're not doing. We all need to, to, to focus on this together and just put this stuff off for now because if it keeps spreading, you're talking about a potential to push this into June, July, I mean, and that's not even this board necessarily talking, that's state and federal that are also considering these things if they get out of hand. So we need to, as a community and as, as Americans, we need to head this off and that is our individual responsibility. So that's just my thought on that. John. Yes. I think you're muted. What? No, not no, you. Sean. Oh, Sean. Relax. <laughs> Sean, yeah. Sean, you're still muted. Technology is wonderful when it works. <laughs> Chris, are you seeing him as muted? Chris Baez? I, I don't have anything on my computer that's muted. Oh, now you're, so. you're there you go. Okay. Um, so, um, sorry, what, what I was trying to say was, let's all remember that for people trying to look for loopholes, whether it be the beach, um, you know, the closing of the beaches or getting up here or trying to get to their, their second home, we all love Wells and I'm sure you all love Wells. So looking for loopholes is not doing the right thing for the town that you love. We are trying to preserve this town and that is preserving it for everyone. Again, it's to try to keep this town going. So please do not look for loopholes or try to break these rules and recommendations. We're doing this for the betterment of all the people that love Wells. And I, I'd like to stress another thing. While we're all looking to save the summer, you know, New York had loopholes too. And look what happened to them. We're trying to save lives here. We're, our lives and your lives and everyone else's lives. And I'm not trying to exaggerate here, but I'm just saying yeah, we want to save some of it, but we also want not people not dying from this. We'd like, yeah. to, we'd like to lower this curve and not have people die. And when you look for loopholes and you, you, you're saying on stuff, you, you, I think it's being selfish. And, and I, I'm sorry to say that, and I, I'm not trying to, I, I'm trying not to get angry at it, but I, I just, I think you, you have to understand we're trying our hardest. We want you to be here, but not right now. We just can't handle it. And we watched this unfold in Italy. We have a real world example in a first world country that this stuff happened where people were migrating. They didn't have these sort of restrictions. They spread it all over the country. And there's reports that they're having to triage people, which means that if you go in and you're somebody in your 70s, and you're in a hospital bed and somebody comes in in their 30s, they take you and push you out and you're on your own. I mean, we don't want to see that stuff, but it's not out of the question that that could happen here if we're not responsible about it. So that's what the, the sorts of things that we need to consider. And, and to say that, oh, no, it couldn't happen here is denying the facts that are taking place in the world today. New York City, is, they've got a serious problem down there. So it's, uh, that's exactly, we're trying to head that off. So I hope everybody can respect that. Any other comments before we take a vote? No. I have a motion in, in a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Next item. Uh, Carl, just one second. Just so people yep. understand, this goes till May May first. We, we, but we will relook at this. I mean, if things get worse, it could extend. I, I you know, I, I hope it doesn't. I hope this works. That's that's always the goal of everything. But right. understand, we might have to look at this and extend it. That that's right. all. And the governor might extend her thing too. So. And if it by any chance gets better, we're meeting every week. We're, we're getting together every week. And if there are changes happening, happen that this ends quicker, we'll be able to change that as well. Are we ready for the other? Please. Um, Leah? Will, will Leah go through it? Oh, yeah, Leah. Yeah. Have, well, we have right. to make a motion for this one. And then we can talk about it. Right? Yeah. I make a motion that we accept and approve the Town of Wells temporary stay at home or place of residence 
And again, it would be um, through May 1st. Second. All in favor? I'm sorry. Wait, wait. No, I'm no, no, sorry. No, no, no. Further discussion. Right. Leah, please. Sure. Um, so the, this is the temporary stay at place, stay at home or place of residence order. And um, as I said, this was drafted before the governor issued her executive order, which in essence imposed many of the same restrictions that we're talking about here. Um, our, but in summary, the stay at home or place of residence restrictions basically um, require folks in the town to stay at home unless performing an essential activity. And an essential activity is defined essentially as to perform tasks essential to health, safety, um, or their family members, like emergency services, obtaining emergency services, medical supplies, healthcare professionals, groceries, um, and for certain types of work. Again, we know the drill. If it's an essential service or business operation, then um, you certainly can leave your home and to take care of others and for outdoor activity. Now, I want to be clear that this act, outdoor activity is as every day passes, that's becoming more and more limited. So be mindful that um, where you're going to take your air or your constitutionals is, is allowed by local, state, or federal law. Because as we know, there's, you know, every moment there's closures locally, um, state parks, uh, federal uh, parks. So just be sure that wherever you're intending to recreate or get your um, exercise in is actually open. Um, also part of this is that outdoor recreation facilities owned and maintained by the town. Um, those, uh, you know, again, this is a, a game of hours and minutes and things may be closed as we go forward. But here at this time, uh, we're talking about playground equipment, ball, uh, playing fields. Those are currently closed as I understand it. John, can you confirm that? Yes, that's okay. correct. Thank you. Now, another restriction that I don't believe is in the governor's executive order is with respect to senior care facilities. I could be wrong, that could be in a previous order, but this is basically um, uh, restricting visitors to the senior care facilities, except for in very limited circumstances. Um, it also addresses the, pre the prohibition on use of reusable bags at retail establishments at this moment. Um, people are not encouraged to bring their own bags for, uh, in order to avoid transmission. Goes through some violations and penalties and the duration um, of, of, basically it says that the order shall take effect immediately upon adoption and shall remain in full force until rescinded or modified by the board or the town manager. And the reason why the town manager and the board are, are specifically authorized here is as you'll recall, there was an emergency proclamation issued um, at one of your prior meetings pursuant to, I believe it's chapter 14, which um, gives the town pretty broad uh, emergency management powers in, in states of emergency, such as the one we're facing here. So that's it in a nutshell. And as I said, because the governor has enacted a, a very similar stay at home um, order, that those provisions are essentially similar, but there are a couple of extra ones here so that the board may determine that they want to enact their own because this goes a little bit further. Yeah, I think it's good that we're going a little bit further. And I also would like the town to be able to control the timeline of things. Um, so if for some reason uh, the governor's order expires earlier than what we deem is necessary for our town, um, then I'd like to have this, this ordinance on the, on the books for us. So that way we can extend on our own terms. Right. Other questions or comments? I I also I like I also agree with that because I think in waiting for this it took too long. In my opinion, it takes too long because I think it, uh, the state of Maine is a big state, and sometimes we forget from probably Lewiston South we we have a lot of population. We have a lot of different things than from Lewiston North that happens up there, and I, I get that. So the state is divided, and sometimes decisions get made that affect us that that aren't good for us. And so we have to be able to do this a little stronger, in my opinion, because I, I think, it, you know, personally, from a personal standpoint, we, this took a little too long. Uh, we were going to do it regardless of what happened with her today. Um, so, you know, it, I just think it was long, but my opinion. 
Well, and the important thing to remember is, you know, the cases in Maine, at least what have been tested that we know of, are relatively low compared to the rest of the nation. They're obviously climbing by the day. However, we don't want to wait until it's a crisis. You know, it's it's a proactive response, not a reactive response that we're looking for. So that's, uh, you know, that's of a critical nature, I think, in any decision-making process that's taking place. Any other questions or comments? I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero, thank you. John, anything else that we need to review at this stage? No. Leah, any other thoughts or comments, Leah? No, okay. No. It's hard to believe, uh, but uh, we're moving on to good news. Uh, there, is, there is some out there, we just have to find it. So, John, go ahead. Well, um, our social media um, coordinator has started on our uh, Facebook page, a Town of Wells Gratitude Challenge. And as of uh, right now, uh, we've had uh, a couple of pages of gratitude um, posted and just a couple of them. Um, people are very thankful for our first responders. Um, they are, um, I moved in my neighbor who is struggling with housing as, a, as my roommate so that we've had, have a home during the pandemic. I know not everyone has the ability to do something like this, but I'm lucky enough to have the resources to help someone. Thank you all uh, for the restaurants in town that are keeping their staff at work and providing a nice meal for us. I know this is difficult uh, in these times. Made these flowers, and I'm sorry I don't have the picture, made these flowers from dollar store purchase a month ago. Happy spring, stay well. Um, I haven't had a chance to go to church because I work on Sundays. This has given me a chance to view the services that I've missed for so long. Uh, a shout out to Hannaford staff. They've been working hard and still keep smiling. Thanks to Jim Spiller and the Spiller store folks uh, for hanging in there and doing their part and for the IGA and their uh, work with their staff. Um, and to Dick and Sherry Verano and the Ro Verano restaurant staff that gave local seniors a delicious spaghetti and meatball to go meal uh, for uh, last week. Um, and thank you to the Agunquit Village Market for free delivery. Anything from the board? Yeah, yeah, I'd like, okay. Um, Kathy, go ahead. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'd like to say that um, today, Billy's Chowder House um, offered uh, free shepherd's pie lunch uh, dinners for the, um, for the seniors, and it was curb pickup, and there were people that actually volunteered and picked up meals and delivered them to seniors as well, so thank you very much for that. And also, from the Senior Center um, gift shop um, sewers, they've made over 300 masks they're donating to um, the local hospital. So the seniors are helping too. Thank you. Tim? Uh, yeah, so I'll just uh, go ahead and say that um, a couple of things. I think a lot of our restaurants, and please visit them as they go through this tough time, um, are stepping up with really good deals on specials and things like that, and also trying to help out. I've heard that um, I think Fele's helped the police to uh, feed the police department one day, if I if I remember right, and uh, for the love of food and drink, who, who's currently trying to move, so they're they're not in open right now. Also helped with some police stuff, uh, catering some stuff for them, police and fire. Uh, I think a lot of our restaurants are really trying their hardest to do do what's right and and help out everybody, so we can in turn get some takeout and do some things. That'd be great. Uh, school wise, uh, things are going very well uh, on our. Um, distance learning, so to speak. Uh, it's never easy. Uh, everybody is working very hard to make sure it goes well. And, and, and the, the kids are doing a great job actually of, of getting their assignments done and all that stuff. 
also, just so you, people know, I think there was a little bit of confusion when I post that we have uh, bag lunch at the police department every day. Uh, that's for anyone, uh, courtesy of uh, Chris Pasternak, Mr. Daly, and the school board and the, the school district. Um, they take some extras and bring it down. The, I bring it down the police station every day. It's sitting in the public, public safety building, excuse me. It's sitting in the lobby in there, and you can come in and grab it, no questions asked. If you need a lunch, it's, it's a bag lunch. It's, it's pretty good. I haven't tried it, so don't, uh, you know, but <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, but uh, you can grab that at any time. So I, there's a lot of good going on in this town. The community is outstanding. And, uh, and so uh, let's just keep that up and help each other out. Thanks. Yeah, just to echo that, if there's a silver lining in any of this, it's the, it's the generosity and the ingenuity of all these businesses, not just Wells businesses, but the state of Maine. I've seen three distilleries are now making hand sanitizer, L.O. Beans making masks, um, you know, looking at Wells, what businesses have, have, how they've adapted so quickly to offering to businesses that you never thought would deliver are now delivering. And you're seeing breweries deliver. You're seeing, you're seeing all these cool things. And Tongan's got uh, their drive through and you can get their mimosa kits from them or birthday kits i mean it's, it's really cool what businesses are doing right now i mean it's unfortunate what they have to go through during this time but the way that they're adapting and surviving is is really miraculous and then um my other thank you goes out to uh Brittany, our new social media uh consultant for the town i think she's doing a great job um so far um and if you're looking for the most up-to-date and accurate information about the town you'll want to like our town's facebook page which is town of wells comma maine that is the town's Facebook page where you get the accurate and up-to-date information that is being posted more frequently on that site now. Great, thanks guys. Moving on to open to the public, this is the opportunity for folks to write their questions and we'll do the best we can to answer them as, as well as we can. Oh, oh, I meant to say something on the good news. Sorry, Joanne. But I just wanted to thank, I know you guys thanked a lot of people, but there's a lot of delivery people in town, Postal, UPS, FedEx, and all else. I mean, they're out there getting food to people, getting all kinds of things necessary for people to survive in the uh, quarantine. So I wanted to, I wanted to thank them, and uh, they've been real good to us at PD. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the cooperation we've had at the beaches. They've, uh, I'll say. 95% of the people have been very good about it. They understand, we're trying to educate, uh, as we will with this stay in place order. There'll be an education first and foremost, and hopefully everybody uh, through voluntary compliance will uh, take heed and do the right thing. I know we, have to, we do have to handle calls day in, day out. Please cooperate and uh, do what's best for everybody here. So if we approach you on the beach, the officer's doing his job. Just be respectful of that. And I, I appreciate everybody that has, and uh, we'll get through this. And uh, one last thing, I, I want to make sure our staff, our employees, that total over 100 in, in Wells know how dedicated um, they are to doing their jobs on a day-by-day -day basis, uh, from remote to critical services on site to uh, first responders. They're there, they haven't given up uh, anything. Uh, they're doing their jobs and the town is uh, functioning as it should. Great, thank you all. Anything else? Thank you. Moving on to open to the public, uh, I believe, uh, Brittany, you have some questions from folks. Yep. So we're getting, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. All yeah. right. So we are getting some questions on Facebook. Um, there was one question about, you know, if we do have these um, rules in place, is takeout still an option from restaurants and can you leave your house to go get takeout from local restaurants? You want me to field that one, John? And sure. Uh, yeah, I think that that would fall within the essential services. I don't see anything in the executive order by the governor that just came out um, that limits the takeout. Um, 
And considering that it is, I think that arguably food and the provision of food is an essential service that I don't see anything that, that would limit that. Can you hear Thank me? You. Is that okay? Next question. Um, a few people have asked, and I think this is already answered, but maybe if we just reiterate it, um, they own homes here and they want to come up just for the day and then go back to Massachusetts. Um, just to reiterate that that is not something that they can do at this time. It's preferred not because there's stay in, stay in place orders in surrounding states. So to come for the day uh, would probably not be looked upon favorably. Um, there were a few questions about whether or not there are co confirmed coronavirus cases in Wells. The, the problem with answering that is you, you uh, break uh, the privacy laws, the HIPAA laws. Um, there are well over 50 in York County. Uh, so the virus is everywhere in, in York County. It's in our community. It's in uh, Agunquit, it's in Kennebunk, it's in Sanford, it's in the 29 communities of York County. So uh, the CDC doesn't specify where these cases are and they, they really shouldn't. And let's also remember that the CDC is specifying cases based on permanent residents, not where the people actually are that are sick. Um, so you know, Maine's cases might be way more than it actually is because there could be people from other states here and those numbers would be reflected in the other states, not ours. Another question we received is whether or not um, Town of Wells will be putting a curfew in place for evening hours. That's something that I can answer. We, we have not spoken about it at this stage. Uh, no, I, I think we're starting to get a little too far over the edge if people recognize what we're trying to accomplish, then common sense prevails at this stage. Okay, give me one moment just to comb through a little bit more. Another question on the on takeout, does that mean strictly going through drive through or can you walk into the establishment to grab your food? Each establishment has something a little different. Um, drive through certainly okay. Uh, most restaurants will come out and give you the food, but some may um, have something a little different. And if I might just add to that, I think that it, it almost goes without saying, but I will say it, that if in fact folks are going into these establishments that the social distancing protocols 10 feet, uh, you know, six feet away, that is important to, um, to honor. I will say that the governor in her executive order, I'm not sure if this applies to uh, any of the restaurants, but you'll note when you read it that it talks about certain tiers of stores. And so it goes by square footage and how many people can be allowed in those stores at any given time. So I would refer folks to those square footage limitations and they, as I say, impose the number of patrons that can be there based on the square footage of the establishment. I think we had a comment here in the chat that's actually pretty good. It said uh, from Jack Saltiel, it said, I think we made a mistake on the order that it should be 5-1 for when the state of emergency ends, whichever is later, not earlier. So maybe uh, after this public comment, maybe we should go back and amend um, what our order said in order so that it's clear. This, well, that's what it said. Or is that not the case, Leah? Should it be later or earlier? Um, I may be misunderstanding the uh, comment, but I, I think it's just a, a, a question of how you want to have it when we say, whichever occurs first, I was sort of thinking about that, that we want to give the benefit of the earlier date. If the governor um, right. has okay. in her, you know, the, given the resources she has at her disposal, determines that the state of emergency is over, um, then perhaps May 1st wouldn't be, you know, it could be earlier. But I think it's up to the board, of course, to draft this as they see fit. 
the, the way it's drafted currently contemplates that yes, it's through May 1st, but if the governor determines that the state of emergency is over, then that date, the earlier date would apply. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. I'd say let's hope for earlier and then yeah, uh, right. uh, I mean, adjust it's all, it as right. necessary. I mean, we'd have to adjust it anyway if it went beyond yeah. May 1st. No, that's a good point. Um, there's some questions coming in about what actually defines essential, in, you know, when it comes to services, um, particularly with lawn care and landscape companies. Can I jump in on that? Please. So the way this has, when I say this, meaning the seasonal um, accommodation limitations, it defines essential business and operation it specifically refers to the governor's executive order on the 24th. So you can look at those definitions. Now I will say that we put in language that says it's, you know, essential businesses and operations are defined as in the governor's executive order, except to the extent that that definition conflicts with the terms of this order. And so um, I think, as I mentioned earlier in my comments that the governor in her most recent executive order that was issued today um, says that towns can be more restrictive. And so um, honestly, I think the only area in which this order is more restrictive is with respect to hotels and lodging. Um, but as far as uh, landscaping and such, I would refer you to the definition of essential business and operation in the governor's March 24th order because it's a laundry list and I would refer you to, to look at that. Um, we have another question here about where um, seniors can call or if there's a number they can call to get aid with food and medication during this difficult time. Um, I, I will tell you that the senior center is, has, um, we are manned at the center with two people that are there to answer the phones, um, a volunteer and the um, office manager, Kendra Fowler. Monday through Friday, nine to three. Um, and that number would be 646-7775. She has all sorts of resources at her um, fingertips to be able to help seniors. There are ongoing meals that are being um, offered by different restaurants. So that gets posted on our Wells and Gunquit uh, Senior Center Facebook page. So people can look there and um, and as well, um, she has any emergency or anything. We have volunteers in place. There are teams and people that are making phone calls to um, seniors. So that's a really good resource and I'm sure there are others. Yeah, and I know uh, Trisha Hazlitt's been posting on Facebook that she has, um, she's coordinating volunteers for that, that same thing. So I think you can reach out to her um, as well. I just, a uh, question just came up on chat um, and, and she, I think it's just a clarity question. Uh, can, like Lafayette's, stay open with current guests and for essential workers and or as a shelter? I have the doors open if we are to be ready. I know we asked it before, but I think she's looking for clarification. Do you want me to jump in on this one, Tim? Yeah. So I am, you know, I know it sounds very lawyerly, but I'm reluctant to give any specific advice for any specific, um, you know, business owner online here because we just don't know the existing situation. So I think that's something that we need to talk about on a one by one fact specific basis. Um, I will just say that, you know, when it comes to what is permitted, if you look at the exceptions, again, I would refer anybody who is asking to that definition that is in the governor's executive order. And anybody, I would say that anybody who is working in those essential services then if they need a place to stay, then the places may remain open and provide services to such folks. Um, again, I think it's not uh, well advised to be making determinations um, on a li at a live meeting, but I know I'm sure that the code office and John and, and you know, Selectman, and I'm happy to weigh in on this offline um, in any situation that's fact specific. And I think, I think we can address their current guest portion because we said that um, the order is as of today. So if you already had guests that were there, they are not going to be kicked out. So I think that part is, is 
clear cut, right? Well, that language was actually on short term rentals. Right, short term rentals. Oh, okay, sorry. I didn't. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, that's a, an interpretation issue that, or an enforcement issue that we can figure out going forward. Well, common sense has to play, and I'm not telling anybody what to do or what not to do, but common sense here. Obviously, if hotels are going to be shut down and there's people staying at a hotel, we don't want to put them on the street, especially if they're essential workers. I think what makes more sense is you shouldn't be advertising for short-term rentals or trying to draw people into town to stay at your facility. So common sense on some of this stuff has to, has to pre prevail as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, if we're going to get technical, we're looking at the effective date of, and it's only effective as of today if people were here already. Um, to your point, Carl, you know, this is a prospective looking order forward. We, yeah, and we already have it. Um, there are exceptions in there for essential workers um, already. So um, if they have essential workers in there, they're, they're allowed under the under a declaration anyway. Next question, Brittany. Carl, a question people have is uh, through now on elder family members, elderly uh, neighbors. And I'm sorry, say I can't hear you, Joanne. Uh, people are inquiring if they're able to check on elderly family members or elderly neighbors, if that's, uh, that's allowable. Uh, also, if someone from out of state is wondering how they will come up and uh, Well, I think part of the, the governor's executive order, if you're in town to be taking care of a family member, that's allowable. Um, it, it starts to get dicey, as Tim said, if, you if you're coming from a state that has a state place order, how do, how do you get here legally? Uh, and that's one of these uh, hardship cases and questions that, you know, you have a family member and, you know, you're supposed to stay at home if you're from Connecticut, for example. But if you need to come and take care of a family member, uh, I'm going to say that that's probably common sense once again. Okay, and then another question, uh, two other questions. One is, do all, do all construction activity have to stop? Lee, I'm not sure if they mentioned anything about construction or landscaping, but again, you know, I, I know I don't think they do. contractors that are working that uh, are outside that are fewer than six people that, and they're not congregating, such as somebody in grass by themselves. Um, you know, this this order is for the protection of the, of the state. And, you know, it's it spills over into state by state and region by region. A lot of this, I think, again, comes down to common sense. Exactly. A uh, question for Leah. Um, can you clarify the amount of customers that can be in a grocery store? I'm seeing different reports out there and the amounts of customers in the store. And are, are they required to have some out of the door counting? Joanne, I'm sorry. I asked, I heard you ask me about clarifying numbers of folks in a store, but I missed it after that. She's asking what the restrictions are in uh, grocery stores and pharmacies in the um, I think that was addressed in the uh, governor's order. It is, and it's very specific, and I, I don't want to bore people too much, but and under section um, three entitled Essential Retail Businesses and Operations, um, it talks about in-store gathering limits. And basically, it, I'm reading it directly, to reduce the risk of community spread, essential stores with re retail spaces of, and then there are five specific categories. First is less than 75 100 square feet shall limit the number of customers in the store at one time to five. Then, and, and, and they provide examples like gas stations, convenience stores, specialty food stores. Then it goes um, in score footage between 7,500 and 25,000. That's 15 people. That would be, and again, examples here, standalone pharmacies and hardware stores. Again, this is, uh, those are just examples. Uh, 25,000 to 50,000 square feet is 50. That's sort of a locally owned mid-sized grocery store. Between 50,000 and 75,000, that's only 75 people in the store at a time. Examples of such stores typically include chain grocery stores. And then more than 75,000, this is a traditional big box. Um, you can only have 100 in it at a time. So those are pretty specific. And then it goes on to say that, you know, they need to make sure that at the checkout, there's six feet of separation. 
between waiting customers. Um, and so hopefully that answered the question. And I don't believe for the few times that I've been out in a grocery store, I haven't seen anyone with a clicker taking a head count um, to see if once you hit those numbers that they stay shut you down. Uh, what, what I are doing that now that because now that there's very specific requirements, who knows? Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's I saw village yet. market has a sign that and they're enforcing the amount of people in the store at a time because that's such a small grocery store down the Gunquit. Right. And there was one up in Stanford that had they were only let so many people in at a time. Yeah. Have you seen enforcement of that, Kathy? I mean, they have people. Well, they had somebody standing there. Only okay. let, they were people lined up outside. Yeah, I hadn't seen that so far. That was Shaw's. Yeah. And, and if, if I might just jump in, um, you know, Carl, you had mentioned the enforcement piece. And uh, the governor, I, I did watch her press conference, and also in this uh, order itself, there is fairly strin, um, strong enforcement provisions. Um, the, the citation that she referenced was um, under the state powers under emergency management. And so um, there are fairly, you know, there's that concern about, well, how are they going to be enforced? But it does say that um, violations are going to be a class E crime and subject up to six months, uh, sorry, six months in jail or a thousand dollar fine. So um, she was very um, specific in both her uh, press conference and in this document that there is, you know, there is some teeth to this. Yeah. I I like to think because I'm getting a, a lot of questions about like um, sea glass and uh, beach dreams. I guess they have some units that are available year round or, or which I didn't know about, but whatever. And that people come up to these townhouses, there's like nine in one and another one, whether they could still come up on weekends. I, I don't want to pull a Springfield mayor and get all upset by this, but, and I think sometimes when we're speaking, we say, well, it can't be enforced. Or can't. It's opening a door. There is no door to open here, folks. <laughs> you for this month you're out I, I i don't know how else i can explain that you're you're not coming for this month I, i'm not trying to be mean but that's what we're doing that's what this board is doing we're saying you can't come for this month and maybe longer we certainly hope not but i'm getting a lot of questions right now about well we we always come up for the weekend I, no 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 not now you have a travel ban i we have a travel ban <laughs> we can't do it so sorry Brittany, another question? Um, a lot of the questions have been clarified. There's one here about um, the opening of food trucks and if that will be prohibited. I, would, uh, I think I the Con Condon's After Hours is the only place for food trucks in town. And mm -hmm. my, my sense is uh, uh, that that's not going to open. And we do have other food trucks, though, that aren't at Congans, just not in a food truck park. Well, they either have to be on a private parcel that has a site plan or they're, they're not allowed. Well, I think there's one, right? There's, there's Pam. The one. Yeah. Pam, I uh, can't remember where the Karen's honor roll used to be, right? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a site plan uh, that would be allowed. Yeah. Um, another question here, we can post the order that was passed this evening on both the website and the Facebook page. Yes, we can do that. Yes. Yes. Yep. We'll get that up um, right after this meeting on Facebook. Looking through the comments, um, I think we've clarified there, you know, in the beginning, there were a lot of clarification questions. There are a few questions about campgrounds. Um, if those follow the same rules and um, whether or not camp, you know, workers on campgrounds can still work to get the grounds ready and if that's an essential service or not. Um, and that seems to be the last question that we haven't really clarified or answered. Um, I could speak at least to the whether or not this order applies to campgrounds. And in fact, it does specifically because it's, it's, um, it's, it's actually a defined term in this ordinance. So Yes, campgrounds, rec RV parks, those are all um, contemplated as far as landscaping and other things. Uh, I, I would again direct the everybody's attention to that definition um, by the governor. 
I think the question though was uh, internal to the campground, can their employees continue to set up the campground for the season? Right, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm just referring people to that definition. I'm not seeing landscaping as part of the governor's definition of activities of essential business and operations. I, somebody could have another interpretation of that. That wouldn't be the first time, but- um, That would be me, Leah. Yeah, right. I'll that answer me. From, from, from my standpoint, you know, again, it's common sense where there's so many people that are unemployed right now. If people can work safely, in the, less than six people congregating, and, and people are locally doing cleanups and whatnot, um, I personally would allow that to happen. That's just my opinion. Um, but this, this, these are the situations that make it so difficult for us to talk about. To, and when we when we vote on things, there's always an exception to the rule. And, and this would be, as far as I'm concerned, one of them. Carl, excuse me though, I, and I, I'm not trying to stop people from working, but it's that's not our rule. And it's not our rule to excuse. It's the, it's the governor's rule who is essential. We're not deciding who's essential. I mean, I understand that. So I just be careful how we say that, because right. if I don't well, know if they are essential or not. That's up to the governor and the lawyers. But well, it, it, if we I can answer it's question. okay. Now we've opened the door. I, I I can answer that question. It is deemed essential. Um, horticulture and grounds care falls under agricultural. So that is a that is a defined definition from the governor. Um, but what we're trying to do here is limit areas of high density. We're not trying to close down businesses. The restaurants were allowed to stay open with takeout because the issue wasn't the restaurant, the issue was the high density you know, atmospheres that the restaurants had inside. So I think that's important to define too in the theme of why this stuff is taking place. It's not just willy nilly trying to put people out of work, so. Yeah, I, once again, I was not trying to say whether they were or weren't. I just don't want us to be, I think sometimes we say, well, it'll be okay, don't worry about it it has to go by the rules. I, you know, it's the same thing I just said about whether you can come up a weekend or not. No. I mean, you know, if you're not deemed essential, then you, I'm sorry. That's just, it's the rules. We can't have it one way or the other. It, it, it's got to be strict. Um, a question, if construction is um, an essential service, how do they go about getting permits? Our, our code office uh, is, John, you want to take this? Yeah, uh, our code office has a uh, full explanation on the website. Uh, they are still processing uh, permits. Um, you can get the application online. Uh, you submit it either directly by email or um, if, if need be um, by, by mail, uh, 208 Sanford Road. And the uh, staff will process those permits, plumbing, uh, building, uh, what have you, to keep keep things going. They're doing virtual tours of houses for their certificate of occupancies. Um, so we are doing what we can to keep that going. Here's that we've clarified or responded to most of the questions. Um, but of course, if anyone has questions after this, they can direct message us at the town of Wells and we can get um, timely responses back if we didn't answer your question tonight. Well, we're also, this is the first of two open to the public. So people can, if they think of any other questions, we're gonna take care of some town business first, uh, which should only take a few minutes. We'll be back to open to the public uh, shortly, and if you have uh, any questions that you think of between now and then, you can continue to send them in and we'll answer them as best we can at that point in time. Anything else at the moment from the board? I think there was one other in the chat that we have right now is about um, if they contract a, a local plumber to turn on the water, can they do so prior to May 1st on a seasonal property? Well, is it an essential service? I think it is deemed an essential service. That would be the answer then. Yeah. All right, we'll answer some more questions later on. Uh, keep them coming if you have them. We'll move on then to current agenda items. Review and action on accounts payable and pay payroll warrants needed. 
Um, okay. Our next then under update discussion and action on committees, projects, issues, purchases, and personnel would be a discussion and action on the Swamp John Road Warren article. John. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, at our last meeting, you asked if we would uh, move forward with uh, repair to the Swamp John Road. And because it's over 100,000, uh, we need to have it uh, on as a warrant article. In fact, uh, through engineering and so forth, it's, it's going to cost uh, $1.1 and we are asking uh, uh, the town to vote and appropriate and expend up to 1.1 million for the purpose of reconstruction, drainage improvements, and the complete repaving of Swamp John Road from the falling funding sources. One, 600,000 from the infrastructure reserve account. Two, 250,000 from the beach erosion account. Three, 210,000 from the Inland Golf Reserve Fund and any necessary additional funds from the FY21 paving account. Questions from the board, comments? Um, I just wanna make sure this will go out to bid. Everyone knows that, right? So that, that will, so it might come in less, but it's only up to $1.1 billion and hopefully we can get some better deals. That's correct. I know this is just one Warren article, John, but you could, could you enlighten us? We had talked last week, there was probably four projects in total that we're talking about. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, um, there are uh, several different uh, projects uh, in the pipeline. Um, what we will probably have to do is get better pricing, better uh, engineering costs on the other uh, possible uh, projects. One is uh, the Pine Ledge Drive, uh, Robinson Road uh, subdivision, the drainage and reconstruction of the roads uh, out there. Uh, that is estimated, again, uh, very high, close to a million dollars. The second one is <coughs> possible repair, uh, capital repair of the wooden bridge on Drake's Island Road. Um, that has been recently reviewed by DOT and it's not in the best shape. Timing is everything on these things uh, because our budgets uh, are put together in October, November, and the process is just about finished. These uh, new uh, uh, costs are obviously something that uh, can't be uh, fast-tracked uh, they have to be reviewed, and uh, we have a structural engineer from Dubois King uh, looking at that bridge, as well as the seawall that uh, has come to our attention down at Casino Square. Uh, recently, Lafayette Hotels uh, has uh, reinforced their seawall, and it has called attention to our uh, wall and its structural integrity. And so um, the same, same um, uh, structural engineer uh, will be looking at that. So those three uh, capital projects are in the pipeline. We expect uh, to have everything squared away by early summer on those and they would be uh, brought forward to the Board of Selectmen for a November vote, uh, probably as a small bond issue uh, that would um, also perhaps include uh, Swamp John Road in the reimbursement of these uh, reserve accounts. Thank you for that. Oh. Other questions from the board? No, nope. want a motion? Please. I move to include the article onto the town meeting warrant and obtain the budget committee's recommendation on it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero, thank you. Five zero. Next is item is discussion and action on updates, personnel and committee assignments, resignations and issues. Tonight there is nothing from the town manager or from the selectmen. Moving on to discussion and action on accepting donations and bequests. The first one being $3,000 received from friends supporting 
the Wells Public Library to the Wells Public Library for first quarter programming. I move that we accept the generous donation and write a letter of thanks to the donor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero, thank you. Next item is discussion and action on approving the minutes of the March 17th and March 24th, 2020 meeting. Any changes on either of the section of the minutes? I move for approval of the March 17th and March 24th, 2020 Selectman's meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero, and thank you, Cindy, once again, for doing a great job for us. New business, we are back open to the public for the second time this evening. Brittany, have you received any other questions? Um, nope, no other questions. I had gotten one uh, sent to me, they would, uh, non-COVID-19 related. Um, they wanted to know uh, when the town would be working to pick up and chip up all of the branches that are down uh, and limbs on the sides of the road right now. We have an issue with our highway department at this point in time. Okay. Uh, we will get to them as soon as we can, but uh, although unsightly, it's not a hazard unless something is out in the street. So it's going to be a while is the best answer I can give unless John, you have some other information. No, no, we have um, some staffing um, issues. Uh, some people self um, uh, isolating uh, at the uh, public works department. So it's it's going to be a while before we have the, the troops all back. I I did I got um, a question about the dump, uh, the, not the dump. Sorry, uh, the transfer station. It, Thank you. It's staying that it's staying open uh, through this, and people can go. That is part of essential uh, travel. So I'm, I'm correct in saying that, right? That is correct, and we are open. Uh, it's regular hours. Uh, we got um, enhanced staffing up there, um, which had a problem uh, a week or so ago, and that's why we were uh, reducing the hours. But it's full hours, and um, we're open. Yeah, I was uh, there at the end of the day today, and I checked with Mark Webster, who's uh, our site manager. Uh, checked with him as to how things are going and he said overwhelmingly people were very pleased that we had the ability to get some additional staff to keep it open the five days a week so most that would be some good news uh, so people are happy they can get rid of their trash yeah. Yeah. can we just reiterate what the um, normal hours of operation are someone asked here for the transfer station Uh, eight or eight, eight thirty to eight, four. Eight, eight during the weekday. It's eight to three thirty, and weekends it's eight thirty to four. Thank you. Great. Any other questions or comments from the board at this time? Yeah. Uh, Public. Cindy has a question. Yeah. Um, thanks. I've been thinking about our friends and neighbors who are in recovery. And trying to hang on to your sobriety is tough enough under normal conditions. And these are not normal times. Uh, when I was first practicing, we had some uh, terrific snowstorms uh, over a couple of winters. And when AA has to cancel a meeting, you know that those are tough conditions. My clients were really hurting because they couldn't get to their meetings. And back then we didn't have um, cell phones, the technology, everything we have today available. So I just want uh, to let people know if you are uh, sheltering at home and you can't get to a meeting, I understand AA is doing online meetings. Um, I haven't checked them out, but um, I'm sure they are. Um, also, if you've been going to meetings, I assume you have a sponsor. Um, call your sponsor. You probably got other phone numbers when you were going to those meetings. And this is the time, don't text, call your sponsor, call those other people. You need that um, little bit of human contact to hear your sponsor's voice and they need to hear you as much as you need to hear them. Uh, you probably got the literature, read your big book. If you've got the 12 and 12, um, this is great time. Pick, pick one step every day, read that chapter and think about it and try to apply it. 
um, until you can get back to um, your, your normal meetings. Uh, the other group of people I've been thinking about are the people suffering um, domestic violence. And I know the um, domestic violence agencies are not meeting with people face to face, but they are manning their telephones. Um, I got the number for Caring Unlimited. Uh, the website is caring-unlimited.org. The phone number is 1-800-239-7298. Um, and you can call them and somebody, somebody would be there to help you over the phone. Um, we're trying not to stress our police officers too much with a lot of calls, but if you are in a dangerous situation, please do not hesitate to call 911 and let's avert a tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. We got another question about uh, clam flats. Anybody want to take that on? The clam flats are closed at this point. Perfect. That answers that question. There's, there seems to be a lot of questions. I don't know who wants to answer this, but there's a lot of questions about plumbing on these seasonal cottages. Um, I, I, I don't want to answer it. I, I don't know. I mean, they, they want to know whether they should turn on the water. Can they turn on the water? I, I, I wouldn't turn on the water because it's going to be freezing. Uh, there are days that you're going to be below uh, 32. And it would be just your luck to pay a plumber to turn it on and it freezes. So leave it off. There's your answer. And then someone had a question about hiking, um, whether Mount A was closed. I'm pretty sure Mount A is I, closed. Yeah, probably. it is. And then they asked about Rachel Carson as well. That's federal government. So well, that's, a, that's an interesting yeah. question. They are monitoring that um, um, trail. Um, it will, it's the federal government. I would call Rachel Carson and ask if it's, if it's open. Yeah. And then just to state a point about hiking, if you're going to be hiking, hike local, don't travel far out of your town or out of your state. I saw a video of Mount Major, which is one of the most popular hikes within an hour's drive. And it was slammed. There was traffic backed up a half a mile from the parking lot. Um, it's just not smart right now. Um, even I went to Oris Falls this weekend and there was a dozen cars. I've never seen more than one person there. Um, it's just not a get out and get fresh air, but try to stay local, stay to your neighborhood, stay to your trails that are right next to your house. Don't try to overwhelm these, these large popular hiking and walking spots during this time. Um, just one last question that came in. Is there anyone checking in on the elderly right now? because there are a lot of elderly complexes in the town. Yeah, I know that um, we have over 400 members, which are uh, mostly local of people that are 55 and older at the Wells Agunqua Senior Center, and of course it's closed. So we have email blasts that go out to them. And then those that don't have emails, there's um, a group of people that make calls. For instance, I have a group of um, 10 people that I call on a regular basis and update them on what's happening. And I'm not the only one, there are like seven or eight or nine others that are doing that. So um, if you know anyone who want, you want to check on or whatever, again, call 646-7775. And um, the person, they will answer it, take the information and assign someone to actually call and check on them on a regular basis. Yeah, we also have our uh, good morning program that we do check on uh, people here in town. Also, if someone is out of state and they would like someone checked on, uh, we do check well bins all the time for people. Yeah. Uh, so we provide, and it's a uh, good chance for you to stay home. And let us let us do it for you. Uh, I just I just got another question. <laughs> I'm gonna try to stay calm. Uh, condos, they they want to know can they start to open if they haven't opened yet? Um, once again, no. No. Uh, you can't if you're closed right now you're going to stay closed um and I, i'll that's about as clear as we can say um every time we've answered that question no don't open right now i, I would like to just say one thing uh just in case people didn't see this he's an agonqua resident but um was big in in our town in in, in the builders and a lot of people know him uh jack Ladabush 
uh, lost a, a tough fight with cancer uh, last uh, two day, uh, yesterday morning. Uh, a lot of people in Wells know Jack. I, I know Kathy, probably you do. And, and, and uh, he was a big time builder around, built most of Forbes hotels um, and stuff. Um, a great man, uh, lived in a gunkwit, but was a Wells guy, uh, went to Wells High School, uh, was a really good guy. And I just wanted to say that, you know, we, we lost him uh, yesterday and my condolences to him and the family because they're pretty big in the gunkwit and Wells. So. Thanks, Tim. I think just before we go to the town manager's report, I just want to reiterate again, you know, these are very difficult decisions for us to make in very difficult times. None of us have ever prepared for dealing with situations as critical as we, we are all understanding and living with at the time. And, you know, as nice as we can be, we have to be as equally as forceful in regards to recognizing we just we just can't have the density come to wells right now we don't have the resources to handle it and god forbid the situation gets any worse because it's not going to be a place where you're going to want to be for a short term uh, hopefully we all get through this together our businesses i hope you understand we're doing what we can but we have some rules that we have to follow as tim has said and i just want to thank the the board of selectmen the, the town staff our town attorney for the countless hours and time that the work that's going in behind the scenes to try to make this the, the safest possible place that we can be. So thank you to uh, all of you. And it's really appreciated. John, town manager's report. Uh, very quickly on the same theme. Um, we, we have assistance out there um, for people who are hitting rock bottom at this time uh, because they've been laid off, because uh, they just can't make ends meet. Uh, our general assistance uh, coordinator is listed on our website under general assistance services. Uh, she's working remotely. Uh, please email her if, if you find uh, you need help. Um, also, for small businesses, the Small Business uh, Administration, SBA, there is uh, materials on our website right front page uh, that talks about loans and ways uh, they can be of assistance to uh, the small businesses that have been shut down and are affected. Any other comments from the board in regards to anything at this point before we adjourn? Just real quick, I want to assure everyone that the person sitting behind Chris Baez, I just got two questions on it. They said they haven't <laughs> moved. He hasn't moved and, and they were concerned. That's a, that's a fake background, don't worry. <laughs> Stanley Hudson from the office. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Chris. We needed a, a, a light moment there and thanks. <laughs> That, uh, anything else at this point? If nothing, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five Thank zero. You Thank you. Good Thank night. You, and we'll talk to you in a week. Stay healthy out there. Yeah, stay healthy and stay safe. Take care. Bye.